Well, I always tell dyslexics I talk to that it, dyslexia is actually a gift because it gives you talents that other people don't have. It's now very clear that dyslexics excel at some kinds of, um, of occupations. For instance, there are more artists who are dyslexics than you expect. There are more architects who, than you'd expect. There are more entrepreneurs than you'd expect. There are more engineers than you'd expect. Now, all those things have a, uh, something in common. That is to say, they, it means you have to have a holistic outlook on life rather than being good at sequential things. Reading requires sequencing, sequencing the letters and the words and making sure you know where they are in the right order. Whereas artists require really to see a whole scene and see how all the bits fit together. Now dyslexics are much better at that than they are at these sequential things. It's really clear that there are more dyslexics among uh, artists, architects, etc. But the, it's often argued that that is because people who are dyslexic are bad at reading and therefore they are diverted away from things that demand a lot of reading into things like artist, being an artist, etc. Um, but the balance of evidence now suggests that actually dyslexics are not just forced into these um, kinds of pursuits, but they are actually more talented in them. And you can test that in the lab by testing things like um, their ability to see, spot figures in uh, a cluttered scenery or the, their ability to discriminate colours. A, a lot of, of what we call holistic kinds of visuospatial tasks, dyslexics are better at, and that's absolutely clear. So that suggests very strongly that they do have superior talents. And that's only to be expected, actually, from a genetic point of view or evolutionary point of view. The fact is that dyslexia is extremely common. About 10% of people have it, particularly boys. Um, that means that there must be compensating advantages. Because if it was all disadvantage, that gene or genes, we now there's at least know that there's at least seven genes involved, those genes would have disappeared because they're... You know, what, one of the things we know is that um, uh, many dyslexics have poor motion discrimination, a poor ability to pick up motion. And um, if you had a really seer, a serious deficit in that regard, you wouldn't see the oncoming saber-toothed tiger and you wouldn't live to procreate your genes. So it's quite clear there must be some balancing advantage of being dyslexic. And, the, and it's quite clear from what I've just said that it is this holistic talent, this ability to see things in the round that dyslexics have uh, much more than ordinary readers. Well, I always tell dyslexics I talk to that it, dyslexia is actually a gift because it gives you talents that other people don't have. And I'm sure that, that both things are true. That is to say, um, Children who are dyslexic tend to take up pursuits that don't demand too much reading. I would, anyway, if I couldn't read. I mean, it's very, very um, frustrating to be trying to read a book and not be able to when your peers can do so. So you tend to do the things you're good at, and you're good at um, these things that require holistic visuospatial abilities. And, as we, I've just said, we actually find that dyslexics are very good at those kind of pursuits. So it's a combination of the two. It's both um, the, uh, the um, uh, ability to see things in the round and also um, the fact that people are, are um, driven towards those sort of pursuits because they're not very good at reading. Nobody says they're in opposition. They actually are, are a happy marriage, I would say. First dyslexics I met when I was first um, introduced to the whole subject was somebody who was a first wrangler, senior wrangler at um, at Cambridge, uh, i.e., an extremely good mathematician, came first in the math tripos, and um, he was extremely dyslexic. 
And when I discussed it with him, he said, well, the thing was that he was really bad at um, things like arithmetic and adding and subtracting numbers. But as soon as he began to see there were patterns in, in mathematics, he could see patterns that other people couldn't. And Einstein said the same, that he saw things in pictures. He, didn't, he couldn't work it out sequentially. And Einstein's a well-known dyslexic, or was a well-known dyslexic. Well, I, I'm sure you're right, because one of the things on this has never actually been published, but one of the things I observed in working with a primary school teacher was that um, the dyslexic children were remarkably good at drawing three-dimensional objects. Because most children say, well, a three-dimensional object looks like this, um, and therefore they draw let's say the top and then they don't know what to do about the bits underneath whereas a dyslexic will see how it actually looks not how it should look and so they get it right <laughs> it's noticeable that there are many dyslexics among architects and the reason probably is is that architects need to be able to visualize how their buildings are going to look uh, when they're completely built. And it's very difficult for most people to see that from plans, for instance, flat plans on a piece of paper. But um, dyslexics are notoriously good at seeing things in three dimensions and extrapolating from two dimensions into three dimensions because of this holistic ability that they have. Richard Rogers, the famous architect, who is himself dyslexic, um, says that he prefers to have dyslexics in his drawing office or in his architect's office because they can visualise how a building's going to look and he needs that to be able to know that the building's going to look as he wants it to. Uh, this is highly controversial but there seems to be evidence that dyslexics uh, have more activation of the parts of the brain that are known to be important uh, for creativity and so in uh, functional magnetic resonance imaging experiments where you um, get dyslexics compared with good readers to uh, exhibit creativity there's a thing called the Torrance test of creativity for instance uh, you can show that there's more or some people have shown that there's more activation in a particular part of the brain in this this part of the brain in the frontal lobe um, there's more activation of that area in dyslexics, particularly in the left hemisphere, um, than in good readers. And that correlates with their better creativity. This means being able to sequence things in time, se sequence your life, as it were. And they're notoriously bad at it. Dyslexics I've uh, dealt with, you know, notoriously fail to turn up on time or turn up two hours earlier, that sort of thing, because they don't have that absolutely embedded sequencing style that most of us get through education early in life. Um, but that has its good side as well, because it means that they're open to new suggestions, new ideas, and that's probably one of the things that contributes to their um, artistic talents. Another aspect of this is because they have such bad time trying to learn to read, if they survive their schooling, they will have developed means of getting over this, plus a great deal of determination. Yeah, what, what, one of the things I'm convinced that uh, explains why, entre among entrepreneurs, dyslexics are ten times overrepresented than you'd expect. Um, and it's because, through the knocks of life, particularly during education, they've had to and become very resilient. They've made lots of mistakes and they've had to work way out ways around these mistakes. And as a consequence, they are extremely determined and successful because they don't give up.